Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the morning ramble here at Homesteading Off the Grid. Greetings from Miss Cleopatra. She's coming up here to see with me because she can tell I'm wound up already. Guys, did you know most farmhouses are white because of the invention of the wheel? Yes, here we are as of this recording, the year 2018, and my farmhouse is white because of something that was invented up to 30,000 years ago. According to historians and what we think we know, come here, kitty, come on. Modern man has been around for about 30,000 years, and civilization, that being the amount of time in which uh, our known form of modern man has kept written records, dates back about 7,000 years. So, here we are, these thousands and thousands of years later, and here's, how, here's why my house is white. Now, before I explain this, and before I make all these connections, and before I actually challenge you to think a little bit outside the box, which is where I live my life, I got I threw the box away years ago. Hey, girl. Say hi. All right, hear me out. So I was talking with some folks the other day. We were talking about driving around out here, uh, looking at the beautiful leaves in the fall here in central Virginia, and getting out in the country away from the city. And you know, We live out in the country, and uh, it's how beautiful it is that time of year. They're gone now, sadly. They'll be back next year. And now we get to watch the beautiful winter snow and all this stuff. Hi, girl. So anyway, uh, somebody we were talking to commented about why are all the farmhouses white? And uh, shouldn't they all be different colors? It would be more exciting out there in the country or whatever. Um, I did some research, and my research blew my mind. I kind of knew why most farmhouses were white. And that's because originally, going back to colonial times, and, and we're here in Virginia, so this is very fitting because, you know, the first colony down there in Jamestown, they used a substance that wasn't actually paint. It was called whitewash uh, to paint houses and barns and fences. And the, the, the whitewash was a lime-based substance. And, of course, they used lime because it uh, was a disinfectant. It covered odors. Um, it cut down on mildew, which was very important here in the colonies and still to this day here in Virginia uh, because of the humidity we get in the summer. I mean, it's very humid. There's a lot of moisture in the air. So the lime helped cut down on the mildew, which can really wreak havoc on just about anything. Um, and, of course, it's white. So it, it was white. So if you remember the old Tom Sawyer book by Mark Twain, which, of course, was made into many movies. Looks like Cleopatra got a mole. Um, she's one heck of a mouser. You remember the scene of, of uh, Huck Finn doing the whitewash thing. Whitewash was actually easier to apply than paint. That's why children could do it very easily. Um, so we're now a couple of hundred years, well, 400 years past Jamestown, and most farmhouses are still white, uh, even though we're not using, this is not a lime-based uh, whitewash down here on our home. This is actually white paint. A lot of people who have old farmhouses out in the country use white vinyl siding. Um, so now we've gotten to the point to where we're doing it because that's kind of how things have always been done. Now, that just the way my mind thinks got me thinking about how, well, isn't that similar to why the roads in America are the width they are? Because it goes back to the railroads, which came from uh, coal mining carts in England. It basically goes all the way back to the width of the axles of chariots in the, in the Roman days. And then, of course, that led to the width of the road, of uh, the Silk Road in Asia from China over through Eurasia to the Atlantic. It was like 8,000 miles long. It was all based upon the width of two horses' butts. That's all true, at least I thought, till I started doing research. This is where, oh, I had to write this stuff down. I remember it. But listen, I guess the point of this, guys, is we've all heard it said, wouldn't it be amazing the things we could get accomplished if we didn't care about who took the credit or who got the credit? History is being rewritten in such a way to where uh, people are actually going back and taking credit for things they had nothing to do with. So they're not trying to reinvent the wheel. They're claiming they invented the wheel centuries and sometimes thousands of years after the wheel has been invented. And this is why most farmhouses are white. They call me Crazy Lake for a reason, but let me explain. Okay, so there's all these sites that have come out, all these websites that 
allegedly debunk all these myths and all these fake news. And let me tell you, I know about fake news. If you've been following the channel for a while, you know I used to write fake news. I used to make good money writing fake news. It's a very lucrative business. And by the way, it looks like Mark Zuckerberg is finally being called to the mat on this because he didn't seem to care until he got called to the mat on it by Congress. He knew most of the stuff on social media, or at least on fake book. I mean, that's why we call it fake book. One of the many reasons uh, was not real, but... Well, whatever. That's a whole other topic for another time. Um, but here's what I'm getting at. Okay, so I found one of these sites that claims everything is fake and nothing's real. So they start talking about how uh, the railroad width actually was because of some ingenious engineer in England during the heyday of the English coal mining days back in the 16 or 1700s or something. Okay, the Roman chariot axles were four feet, eight and a half inches wide. Um, the, the, the urban legend that's been passed down for centuries is that that's why railroads are that wide, the, the distance between the two tracks because of the Roman chariots. And the claim is that the Roman chariots wore down, uh, old highways like what would become the Silk Road and so on and so forth that even hundreds of, uh, 1400 years later, the ruts remained. And so they just determined to make roads this wide so that, the tires at the end of each axle, axle would fit in the ruts that were there and had been there for more than a thousand years. Well, this website's claiming it's not true because this guy in England, he used different widths on his axles to get the coal out of the mines. However, what he found was that the majority of the people didn't like change and so he made this great, this great invention with a certain width axle on this great mining cart that would get the coal out of the mine so much better but nobody would use it because they were stuck with the four foot eight and a half inch thing they've been using forever so he finally created some sort of new cart with that axle uh was the width and so now, so now bam he's the reason why train tracks are four feet eight and a half inches wide and he's the reason why axles are that wide and he's the reason the roads are as wide as they are in the united states now even though the tracks were already that wide is it because of the Roman chariots? I don't know. Or is it because that's the way people have always done things? And that's why most farmhouses are still white, going back to whitewash. And it's not that the, the wheel is trying to be recreated here. It's that everybody's trying to get credit for having created the wheel. Now, let's fast forward uh, to the Civil War days of the United States. We're laying down the, the railroads. Uh, we're, trying, we're trying to connect the East Coast to the West Coast, all the way out to California by railway. There were multiple widths of track. Sounds like my chickens are fighting. Even back then. Now, here's what happened. Uh, during the Civil War, when they were trying to, to uh, bus uh, munitions, supplies to the soldiers, they would get to a place to where all of a sudden the tracks were four feet, eight and a half inches wide, but then now all of a sudden they're four feet, six inches wide, or they're five foot two. They would have to download all the supplies on the carts, uh, drawn, taken, drawn and pulled by horses, and they'd have to take them that way to where the line got back to a standard size to put them back on a train. So the U.S. government steps in and they say, okay, let's lay out uh, uh, a common sized track that's going to be four feet eight and a half inches wide and they laid down four thousand miles worth of this track during the civil war so now the u.s government during the days of the civil war is accredited for the reason why the roads are as wide as they are all based upon the width of the railroad which go which just is happens to coincidentally be the same as the roman chariots which are four feet eight and a half inches again the wheel was not reinvented. However, they staked claim to credit for inventing the wheel. This is why most farmhouses are white, because of whitewash going back to colonial days. It's the way things have always been done, and I guess this is so ingrained in human nature that even when we've tried to get away from it, like the English engineer during the heyday of the English coal mining industry, and like some people, I guess, trying to lay down tracks in certain parts of the country during the Civil War, we just couldn't seem to get away from the way that we always did things, so we continued to do things that way. What, what does this have to do with anything? Houses and whitewash and colonial era days? I guess my point to all this, and what I found in my research, is that, you know, we've got to pay attention to things as they're happening around us, because every decade the story is told differently, and certainly we can see that every century the story is told differently as well. 
You've probably heard this said. I'll say it again, even if you have. Don't believe anything you hear and only half of what you see. Always remember that in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. But if somebody actually has two eyes, they're considered completely insane. So, for what it's worth, that's your morning ramble. It's a little late because I was chopping my firewood while it's frozen. I'm going to go down there and stack it now that it's thawing out. Uh, this is a very strange way of looking at history. It is a, an accurate way of looking at history, but it's certainly different. Um, but that's why they call me Crazy Lake. Thanks for being with us here at Homesteading Off the Grid, and we'll see you for more next time.